is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today we're going to talk about whether or not Julius Caesar is still good in 2020. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I know many of you have invested in Julius Caesar as a commander or are considering making an investment. So let's break down whether or not this commander is still good given all of these tremendous options that we've got available to us. Now, if you like Rise of Kingdoms videos where we talk commander strategy, then you should like and subscribe. We've got a ton of playlists and videos that cover this topic, and we are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms. Now, we're going to do a lightweight review of the skills, of the talents, and the combinations that would be most optimal. What is Julius Caesar's role in 2020? In my opinion, he's still pretty good in Canyon, and most teams at the top of Canyon may not be using him, but there are some solid roles for him there. I think he's solid in the open field, especially in Ark of Osiris. And I think he actually has held up a lot better than I would have expected. So let's talk about why that is. If we get a look at the skills, this first skill is very important, and it's actually very powerful. For a full five seconds, you get 20% attack and 20% defense and 30% damage boost. That is a solid buff to be getting for a full five seconds. And it has to be good, considering that you're not getting big skill damage like you normally might. In fact, something we need to go all in on with this commander is the fact that, you know what? He's not doing skill damage. Now, if we look at the next skill, this is also very strong. It reduces the damage taken by 10%. And when you're less than 60% of strength, you have a 10% chance of further reducing damage taken by 30%. It can only trigger once every five seconds. I did the math on this a while back. This is roughly equal to an additional 9% damage reduction. I know that's not how it works, but in my head, I think of this skill as like 19% damage reduction uh, overall over time, which is pretty solid. The next skill is all about hitting cities. And this is important. It's not garrisons, it's cities. I would love to see this be garrisons to make this commander far more relevant. The last skill increases the capacity by 15%, and the expertise skill makes it so that your active skill does 400 damage factor. It's a small boost, but there's no rage engine on this commander to really make that tick. Now, the thing that makes this commander really solid for the open field is this fact that you can bring so many more troops and the fact that you can really elevate the damage of another commander that you've paired Julius Caesar with. If you bring a commander that does high skill damage, then you can get a really solid boost to the amount of damage that they're dealing. The key is to generating rage. Now, there are some other niche roles we've seen for this commander, which we'll talk about as we start to review the list of possible pairings. Before we do that, I want to show you some of the builds that we consider to be pretty strong for Julius Caesar. We're actually going to use a different commander to show those. We're going to use CPO. He's got the exact same trees. So this is a one-for-one -one comparison. Now, the build I would probably use for just general open field goodness is this build here. We're avoiding the conquering tree because I don't see a lot of value if we're not attacking structures. I would always go and get effortless. I would certainly get Lord of War, which is going to give you a really solid boost of stats as you star up this commander, and also Burning Blood. Now, we need to stop here and talk about this for just a moment. Burning Blood is scary good. This is a part of the reason that Attila and Takeda as a combo are so busted. You cannot swarm them. You cannot swarm them. That is why they're so strong. People do that. They give that combo a bunch of rage. It didn't have a way to get rage. This works really well for the Attila Takeda. The same is true for Julius Caesar because he reduces the amount of damage that he's taking. The problem is that he doesn't really um, have a way to sustain beyond reducing the damage taken. He needs some healing. If he had that, like Attila Takeda does, it'd be you know even stronger. So this talent is a part of what 
makes Julius Caesar very, very strong as a primary. I know it's not even very deep into the tree, but you swarm a Julius Caesar, he's going to reduce the damage taken and profoundly elevate the damage dealt from the first skill. Now, I've also got some points over here reducing uh, the skill damage that you deal, but also increasing the normal damage that you deal. This is something you would want to use if your Julius Caesar is going to be the primary and the secondary is also not going to do skill damage. You could pretty easily swap that over here to fight to the death if what you wanted to do was just increase all your damage dealt. It also increases your damage taken, so beware if you're getting swarmed. We've also gone off to the sides of the attack tree, uh, sorry, the leadership tree, and picked up arm to the teeth and armor to the teeth for the extra damage and damage uh, reduction. In addition, I do want to call attention to the fact that Hidden Wrath works the same way as Burning Blood, which is really crazy. Um, grants additional six rage every time this troops, uh, or this commander's troops are attacked. So you're getting 12 rage every time you're attacked. That combo of talents is a part of what makes Caesar tick. Now there's a couple of variants that we came up with here. If you were hitting cities, you might do something like this, uh, especially if you were launching a rally. If you were looting cities, you'd want to get well provisioned. Uh, that would be very reasonable as a pickup. Right now I use Hannibal Barca as my commander that's really specced out for looting cities. And then here is a uh, structure swarming build you could use in Ark of Osiris. Uh, this goes in on the Conquering Tree for Entrenched, which is very solid. 3% uh, damage dealt to strongholds and 3% less damage taken from strongholds. Uh, and also gets the best of the attack tree and a lot of the best anyways in the leadership tree. So if you were swarming a structure, I think this could be a pretty build, interesting build on Caesar. Now, as we start to get into the pairings, what is going to be fascinating about these pairings is that sometimes Julius Caesar should be the secondary, and we'll talk about the situations where that is the case. In terms of investing your sculptures on this commander, by the way, I mean, I think this is pretty straightforward at this point, but just to be super clear, max the first skill, max the second skill, then take them to four stars and proceed to add further skills. I've kept Julius Caesar as a secondary. I don't know that I'm going to level them up to be a primary. I've always kind of felt like they're a better primary than secondary, but we're going to give you some very powerful exceptions. And let's get right into the mix. The first commander you could pair with is Esong. Uh, using a Caesar primary, Esong secondary, you're going to boost the damage that Esong is going to deal really profoundly. Um, you're going to have a rage generation boost here, which is solid. Caesar really needed that. Um, unfortunately, the extra skill damage bonus is only going to apply to Esong, not to Caesar. This is fine, but just okay. You could use Cao Cao, interestingly enough, as either a primary or a secondary. Bring all cavalry. I think if you're going all in on that plan, Cao Cao will be the primary. I don't know that Caesar is adding all that much that you really wanted with Cao Cao. A lot of tank ability. Doesn't make a ton of sense. Let's continue on. Another pairing you could look at is Richard I. As either the primary or the secondary, you're going to have a lot of troops, which means your healing factor from Richard is going to be really strong. The thing that I don't love about this is the fact that you don't have a rage engine at all. Uh, in that regard, I think Caesar is a better primary because you have a way to generate more rage by virtue of the talents. You're going to have a massive amount of damage reduction between the two of them. So the healing is going to go a long way. You're just going to have a really hard time killing anything. Continuing onward, Minamoto is an okay choice. I don't love it though. You'd have to use Caesar primary, Minamoto secondary. Otherwise, a lot of the talents that are in the skill tree are going to ultimately be kind of wasted, increasing skill damage, increasing active skill damage of the secondary. That's not going to do anything. This is not really an amazing pairing. Here is a more interesting pair, uh, Charles Martel. You put Martel and Caesar together, they're going to boost the damage that you're dealing pretty significantly. You've got shielding, you've got damage reduction, you've got march speed, you bring all infantry to that party. You probably want to use Martel as the primary if that's the game you're looking to play. Some people rock that in Canyon, uh, similar to Richard, by the way. They use Richard and Caesar or Martel and Caesar in order to have just a huge number of troops, which can be pretty effective in that mode. 
Continuing onward, the classic early game rallying pair of Caesar Barca. Um, look, Caesar Barca had its day, but in 2020, this is not the jam. I would not recommend using Barca for rallying cities. I would not necessarily recommend Caesar for rallying cities either. Weirdly enough, use other commanders. This did not hold up in 2020. Where things get a little more interesting is a Saladin primary, Caesar secondary. This is interesting because the damage reduction is really insane on Saladin. Unfortunately, you don't have healing, which would have been really over the top. Um, but you have the Rage Engine that Saladin provides, which is pretty nuts. Um, the Rage Engine that Saladin is going to provide from Rejuvenate and the skill damage taken reduction here is going to be pretty gangbuster. I actually think you could use that as a pairing and it would do pretty darn well. Uh, all in on that support tree. I don't think Khan is a great pick for the same reason I don't think that Minamoto is a good pick. I do, however, think that Alexander the Great as a primary is really interesting with Caesar as a secondary. You're going to pretty substantially elevate the shield that you get on Alexander the Great and really increase the sustain. I think this combo is actually kind of reasonable. On the topic of reasonable combos, Ethel Flood Caesar. Uh, if you use these two, uh, they will be a pretty tanky march. Um, and you elevate the damage you deal, uh, reduce the damage you take. I actually think with Ethel Flood Primary rocking the support tree would be the way to go, and that's decent. Uh, I would not rock Edward of Woodstock. That is not the thing you're looking to do with this pair. Uh, Attila, what a fascinating choice. I actually haven't thought about Attila specifically because, like, come on, Attila and Takeda. Um, but could you pair Attila with Julius Caesar? I would say yes, but again, you're missing the Rage Engine. There's no Rage Engine here, so I think they're going to perform sort of suboptimally. If you were launching a rally, I would still be confused why you're not using a Cavalry Commander for that. So I think this is interesting because they both care about normal attack damage, but not interesting enough. Continuing onward, Guan Yu would be an interesting pair. I don't think you want him as a secondary. I don't think you want him as a primary. I wouldn't rock this. When I say interesting, in this case, I mean bad. <laughs> I don't think Guan Caesar is a thing. For the same reason, Minamoto Caesar is not a thing. On to classic commanders that have not exactly held their weight in 2020 is Freddy. Um, Freddy is a solid single target commander, but you just don't have the rage to pull this off. The skill tree doesn't make sense to use Freddy as a primary because Caesar won't benefit from that as much. You could use Caesar as a primary, but you have to be getting swarmed in order to get the real benefit of all of his rage generation. But if that's happening, you're going to get melted here. I'm not in love with Freddy Caesar, even though you pair them together, you will have a lot of troops on the battlefield. No doubt about it. But I think you could do better. Continuing on, El Cid and Caesar. I don't love it for the same reason that I don't love... <laughs> I don't love having uh, Minamoto and Caesar. I, I will point out that there's a lot of things here that don't care about the troop type that you have. Um, you know, this cares about archers, but everything else doesn't care about what type of troop you bring, which is kind of interesting. You could bring a mixed troop here. Uh, you could bring all archers. I, I just wouldn't pair them, though. Continuing on, Mehmed II, you put them together, boy, oh boy, you are going to have a lot of troops on the battlefield, I think that Caesar would need to be the primary because you don't really get the benefit of the skill tree if you've got him as the, the primary here with Julius Caesar as the secondary. But then you don't have enough rage gen. I just don't think this combo is amazing. But advancing to combos that I do think could be amazing. This right over here. Constantine full infantry support tree going all in with a Caesar secondary. Rock that in the open field, and you're cooking with gas. Now, why is that? You're going to have more troops. You're going to reduce the damage you take, and you're going to crank out that active skill like crazy on Caesar. That is the thing he has been wanting. He's been begging for that. Yeah, I think this is pretty legit. As a pair, I would be pretty eager to see that in action and get a sense of how it does. A couple other things we could get a look at. Charlemagne with Caesar, I just don't think it's amazing. You'd have to use a Caesar primary. Both of them want a rage engine. Neither of them has it. Leonidas, this guy is all about infantry. Um, gosh, is this interesting? 
I've not even looked really at this. Speed of Rage gained. You know what? This is a deceptively interesting pair. You're going to increase the Rage Gen you have. He cares about skill damage, but like not all that much. If somebody else is doing the silencing or the debuffing, you'll get the benefit of that, potentially. I think this actually is way better than meets the eye. When you're below 50% strength, you gain a shield a lot. Yeah. Um, I think that this is a really interesting pair. Caesar primary, Leonidas secondary. Interestingly enough. I think that's a really interesting pair, and I'd love to see some testing with that. Really interesting to see what that'll ha uh, do in 2020. Now, there is one other legendary we've got to talk about, and I didn't see this one coming. Wu Zetian primary, Caesar secondary, and the garrison is not terrible. It's actually surprisingly better than I would have ever expected. Uh, and as it turns out, getting that active skill from Julius Caesar, like crazy, with Wu Zetian primary support tree cranking that out is really, really good. Um, it actually lasts long enough that you're going to get damage boost to Wu Zetian's active skill as well. I think it's really good. I think it's really good. It's deceptively good as a pair. Um, I wouldn't have expected it. Would I say it's the best of the best? No, but people are using it to counter Attila Takeda, and it's working for that. Not a hard counter, but working well enough. Consider trying it. All right. At the epic level, for Julius Caesar, I think full infantry with Sun Tzu is pretty legit. You really needed Rage Gen from Caesar. Sun Tzu delivers it. I think that Scipio is kind of a classic pair, these two. Um, Scipio is kind of like a mini Julius Caesar. The problem is that both of them want a Rage Engine. Neither of them has it. Joan of Arc is, I think, a very, 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 very solid pairing. Um, look, Joan of Arc is going to do some healing. Not much, but some. Boost the stats of all the troops nearby. Honestly, like Joan of Arc primary to get that support tree goodness is probably the way to go there. And the Caesar is going to give you more troops to, to begin with and also some amount of sustain. Boudica is, of course, universally good. Good with Caesar as well. Um, I would use Caesar primary, Boudica secondary. She's kind of doing all of the things that Caesar wanted. Um, she's doing healing. She's doing damage. I think this is a really solid way to augment your Caesar in the very, very, very early game, but, you know, not late in 2020, all right? Continuing on, Pelagius. You could use Pelagius primary, Caesar secondary in the open field. I don't love it, though. Same reason I don't like the Minamoto pairing. Um, Belisarius, if you if you pair with Cao Cao, you could pair it with Belisarius. I'd say it's so-so again. Wants a Rage Engine, doesn't have one. Bybars, not a great pair for the same reason Minamoto's not a great pair. Osman, not a great pair for the same reason Freddy's not a great pair. Herman does generate some Rage right over, right over here. A uh, little bit of Rage, a little bit of March Speed. You really want more rage generation, though. I guess you could use a Caesar primary Herman, Herman secondary, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, Ulji Mundok, you could use go full infantry. I'd rather you just use Sun Tzu. Um, there is a little bit of a retaliation effect here when you're getting swarmed, which is pretty neat, but overall, I'm not in love with this pair. So in 2020, if I had to pick my top choices for a Julius Caesar pairing and where you're going to use them... It would be Richard I and Charles Martel uh, with Caesar for like a tanky march in Canyon. But better yet would be to rock a uh, commander that's got the support tree. So Saladin primary is an interesting prospect. The reason you don't see much of that is that there's already so many gosh darn uh, cavalry commanders that you could find a cav commander to pair here. The other commander that I think is pretty gangbuster is Constantine. Constantine with a Caesar, use the Caesar as the secondary, I think is pretty sweet in the open field. You don't really see much of this, however, because people are trying to do a lot more interesting stuff with infantry, and you don't see it in Canyon, because typically people pair their Constantine with a Joan of Arc, and that's how they're getting their Joan of Arc in the lineup, so I wouldn't expect that you see it there, but this pair would be pretty sweet. And of course, one of my top picks here for 2020 is going to be Wu Zetian with Caesar. Unexpectedly good. 
If you enjoyed this video, then again, please do like and subscribe. Julius Caesar is a commander that we don't invest universals on because we get them from gold keys. And we have a lot of gold key commanders that we put universals into. And now when we open them in a gold key, it's just totally wasted. We don't love that. Um, so use them, you know, use your gold keys on them. If you want to expertise them, you can. But com compared to sort of your other choices, I think you want to hold off on that. Even in 2020, we're having a hard time finding the justification. And there's probably somebody else in your kingdom if they've got a Wu Zetian that maybe they've got the Caesar. And they can rock that pair if you want to try it. Again, you enjoyed it, like and subscribe, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.